the host of the Ryan Show in Long Island, all the way from Long Island, New York. Let's bring in Ryan. Ryan, how you doing this morning? Yo, what's up, fellas? Doing great, man. I know I'm coming off a kind of a collapse, a Yankee collapse in the eighth inning last night, but we still made it. I'm up for another day of sports, man. Good to see you, fellas. What do you, does Burn Cashman deserve to keep his job? They won five in a row. Yeah, they run against suspect uh, ball clubs, but now they're playing a good Milwaukee Brewers team, and, and Milwaukee took them to the woodshed last night. Uh, what, what, what's your comments on Brian Cashman? To put it uh, short and sweet, no. He does not deserve to keep his job. And if you've been paying attention to the Yankees over the years, I know that he's had his ups and he's brought some good teams together. We're consistently making it to the playoffs, but that's expected with a payroll like mm -hmm. that. I think this is the last rot, and rumor has it, George, is that these young kids weren't even going to be brought up by Brian Cashman, and Hal kind of put the heat to him. Hal Steinbrenner said that he had to bring these young kids up, so we wouldn't even even we wouldn't even had a Martian landing. We wouldn't have seen Pereira. Peraza would probably still be down in AAA. Wow. So yeah, I mean, this is the the final hand that he's showing here. This is the the cards that he's had hidden in the deck. If these kids don't pan out, it would not surprise me. And I know that a lot of people are going to say I'm crazy, but maybe he will be fired. After all, there's only three years left on his contract. Pay him and let him you know, rebuild. Let's see what happens. Exactly. exactly. Hey, Ryan, I'm definitely there with that. I've been saying this early, as always. Welcome to the show, my brother. Glad to see you. Um, to me, it is easy. Let's fire Brian Cashman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cashman uh, has to go. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, the guy hit stone run against the Detroit Tigers. Yeah, okay, beautiful, man. But how come you don't hit him against the Astros or games when you're playing against top, the top contenders? You don't seem to show up uh, and get the job done. Uh, it seems like you had a lot of guys, uh, Josh Donaldson, you had a lot of dead weight on that team. Older guys, get rid of the older guys. Go with the young talent. You and now this kid, uh, Jason Dominguez. It, it, it looks like he, he's a young. Wait, this another guy. This, this to me, this makes a, a, a worse look, a, a worse look on Cashman because you got talent like Jason Dominguez down there in the farm system. This guy should have been up playing. Correct. For sure. I would think he should have been up uh, even earlier this year. He's playing so much better in Major League Baseball than he even played in the minors. And you know, what gets me about Dominguez is just his state of mind. If he hadn't hit four, four home runs since he's been in Major League Baseball, just his attitude, he doesn't seem to be shook. And I feel like that's such an important part about playing in Yankee Stadium is you need to have that mentality that you're not just starstruck by being a Yankee and by wearing those pinstripes. He's just a happy-go-lucky kid, always smiling. He just seems to have that right mentality about him for a 20-year-old. And, you know, not not getting spooked by anything going on around him. So to me, I think that mentally he's a he's a great fit. And talk about making a general manager's life easier. Now there's one less position to even worry about in the offseason. He's he's the center fielder of the future. And he has a hell of an arm, too. Showing off his yeah, arm he, last night. Yeah, he, he does. He does. And uh, Volpe has been playing well. You, you they, they have the nucleus for, for a really good team. And the teams that are winning – are the teams that are going with the young guys. They're going with the young players. Uh, they have young uh, uh, hitters. You, you look at Baltimore. Baltimore, all of their draft picks have now come through the Machado deal. When they sent Machado to the Padres, I always thought the Padres got the best of that deal. But, hey, you look at now, you, now you look at the long run, boy, the, 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 the Orioles got a lot of good draft picks from the Machado deal. And the, the big man is worse. The Padres never made the playoffs with Machado. They haven't made the playoffs, and then they pick up Juan Soto. They have the third highest payroll uh, between Yankees, Boston, and San Diego and San Diego Padres. Three highest payrolls in the league, and those guys are are, are in the bank are not making not close to making the playoffs. Yeah, they, I, I just feel like they couldn't get the momentum back after losing in the postseason last year. The way they took out the Mets was great, but disappointing after that. They never seem to really get it together since. And on paper, that Padres team is stacked. Yeah. And even even the eye test, those guys are great still. I mean, maybe it's some deeper issues. Maybe there's something going on behind the scenes with coaching. I mean, they have arguably the, the Cy Young winner in the National League over there too. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not looking good. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. The game is changing. People want to – it's just a, a quicker game with the pitch clock. And people are faster. Stolen bases are more important. 
So, yeah, bring these young kids up. Give them a chance. And it makes you think, too, maybe trading some of these superstars that are 30 years old to 33 years old for a bunch of young kids is a better idea than ever. They've got some great scouts out there. They really are able to eye the talent out. Mm -hmm. So you make a very good point about the Orioles. Everybody thought that the Padres got the better end of that deal. I mean, you get arguably the uh, the best third baseman in the past 10 years. And, I mean, it's a, a plethora of young guys come up to make up for it. Yeah, you either got to win now. When you make a deal like that, you got to win now with the Machados and guys of that uh, that ilk when you're trading. And then you get a Juan Soto, you bring him in. Then you bring in pitcher. You got about four or five. Uh, excellent. You got Darvish. You got you got all kinds. You got yeah. the uh, Musgrave. You, I mean, man, you got all kinds of loaded. There's no way that Padres should be. They should be sweeping teams. They should not be losing two out of three games uh, almost every other series. Those guys, uh, there's something going on. They need a new new manager. Somebody need to go. Maybe they need Deion Sanders to come over there and give them a talk or something, man. Because they need to be. They the Padres need to be taught, They need to be coached up, man, with the talent and the payroll that they have, especially. When you see teams like that, but who you see down the stretch, Ryan, of the teams right now that are in contention, who you th- who you think might be a, a surprise team that you think might be able to take it this year? A surprise team, maybe Philadelphia again, which I'm not sure if it's even a surprise at this point. Mm-hmm. I do think that what you said on the Ryan show maybe a month ago still resonates with me, and you said that the Braves were going to take it all this year, and yeah. that Braves team is looking really good. And you also called out the Rangers all those months back. The Rangers are falling apart. Yeah, didn't that tell you? you? You called it all those months ago, and they went and they get. I mean, I love to see Araldis Chapman out there getting just blowing <laughs> games. It's about time he's doing it for another team. Right, right. But man, yeah, not not a not a way to sustain. I was surprised, and then you know, honestly, I know that they just got swept by the Yankees. That was one of the greatest series I've witnessed in a long time as a Yankees fan. But those Astros are still scary. Yeah. You can't count those Astros out. You, you can't. And, can't. and one other thing that you mentioned about the Atlanta Braves, I, I don't think it's no team even close to, to the Atlanta Braves this season. I think the Braves, if the Braves, the Braves will have to lose the the World Series and, and instead of winning it because they're they're such a great a great team this year. And and Ronald Acuna Jr. thirty five home runs, sixty three stolen bases. This man has a chance to get forty home runs, seventy stolen bases. No one has ever done that, and no ever. In the history of baseball, you yeah, talked to 40 Tell them again, Rad Man, for the people in the back. Tell them about Acuna, Acuna Ronald yeah, Acuna Jr. You got to get, hey, I don't know if you're dealing with Spectrum. Get get out. I hear they losing sports or whatever. Hey, find the Atlanta, a station where you can see the Atlanta Braves because this Ronald Acuna Jr., he's worth the price of admission. I mean, 35 home runs, 63 stolen bases. That That is unheard of. I thought I'd never see the day of a guy having that many – I, I I go back to the more seeing Maury Wills and and the, at the end of our uh, era with Willie Mays. Willie Mays wasn't Willie Mays when I saw him. He, he was at the end of his career. But uh, but the guy, uh, but but the guy, Ricky Henderson. I didn't think I would see somebody uh, better than Ricky Henderson at stealing bases, or the guy uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals back in the day stealing bases, or uh, they, you know, I'm, I'm really in the Kansas City. Uh, Rose had a couple guys. Willie McGee. Willie McGee with the Cardinals was another guy that could steal bases, too. I mean, you were, this guy's doing it with relative ease, uh, Acuna. He gets on, he steals, but then if, if he hitting, he's hitting doubles, he's hitting home runs. This guy is, is a difference maker. They got Olsen out there hitting as well. You got, uh, you got, you got so much talent on that. Michael uh, Harris, the second, baby, outfielder. He's balling, man. Ball. You know, I, I saw a quick stat that I think you guys might find interesting. And this is, you know, maybe a little PEDs involved, but there's only been four players to ever go 40-40, to ever have a 40 home run, 40 steal season. You guys know who they are? We got Bear A-Rod. Rod. A-Rod. Let, 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 let's play a little guessing game. Who, who do you guys got? If you were to pick the four players that have ever got 40-40 seasons, who would you get? Yeah. I'm going to oh go I, good old Barry Lamar Bonds. Of course, we got Barry. We got A Rod. This is a good one, Jose Canseco. I love me some oh, Jose Canseco, oh. but Lord knows he was on God. Oh, I, never I never would have got him. <laughs> Jose Canseco, and then Alfonso Soriano. Oh, Soriano, yeah. And Soriano so, did it recently. Yeah. Oh my God, pretty recently. But that surprised me when I saw that they were the only four players to go 40-40, and Acuna could go 40-70. 
Yeah. It's insane. Right. That that's unheard of. I, I mean, that's that's unheard of to see, and he's doing it with relative ease and almost under the radar. You're not even uh, hearing uh, announcers talk about him and the feat that he's doing. Because uh, I'm watching him uh, every other night, seeing, and this guy's just hitting the ball for. I mean, he has so much power. I mean, he doesn't even. Some nights he doesn't even take a full swing in the ball heading out the park. Uh, well, well and, and, and now this is all as we talk about this and say this out loud. Now my eyebrows up because this is him recently coming off a torn ACL too. Yeah. So it's like, okay, wait a minute. All right. I'm not no speculation or anything, but just saying, you coming off an injury and balling like this, crazy, man. But he's must watch TV. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So it's going to be interesting to see in the playoffs. I like Seattle's playing hard. The Blue Jays are still playing, but they losing too many games. But I, I like the Atlanta Braves. It's gonna it's the Atlanta Braves season to me to lose uh, for them to lose. But I like the added wild card. It makes an added dimension. The Milwaukee Brewers are playing good ball right now. It, it gives you more fan bases. You get Milwaukee's involved. You, you get other cities other than the big cities uh, dominating baseball like they normally used to do. This is the first year in long and that the Yankees in Boston, either one of them, have, have been, I think they dominated for the last twenty years of being in first place. Either with the Yankees. Uh, New York Yankees or the Boston Red Sox uh, winning the division. So it's nice to see the division seems to be upside down uh, in, in baseball right now. It makes for more. Uh, it makes for more. It makes for more enjoyable, watchable baseball. It, it gives everybody something to see. Uh, Lou Brock. I was thinking of Lou Brock and Vince Coleman of the Cardinals. Uh, those two guys. Lou Brock. Uh, man, he always used to steal bases. I mean that guy. That guy was unbelievable with 888 career stolen bases. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of base stolen bases. Uh, Luke Brock, Vince Coleman, uh, Willie McGee. They're, they're, I grew up with where stolen bases was was a key part of the game. That was a like people bunted to get on base. Uh, but the, with this guy, he's hitting for power. Usually guys who steal bases, they usually couldn't hit that well. But this guy, man, he's batting three, 334 right now. So, uh, so man, it's, it's an awesome feat that Ronald Acuna Jr. is doing right now. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing the rest of the season in, in baseball. And, and for your Mets, one last thing with you. You know, you're out on Long Island. You're covering the Mets and Yankees. Any hope for the Mets for next year? Well, the, it, it looks as though the Mets are uh, – they've got a good young core – just it's hard to stomach everything that happened with the New York Mets because they were slated to be so good and had so much money put behind that team. And they just had that air of almost cockiness. These Met fans, they need to get smacked down every so often, you know, and usually life just has a way of doing it for them. But man, I what a disappointment of a season. I know that they've got some great young players there that are doing their thing towards the end of the year. But it's like the adage that we talked about just on what's going on today. You can't trust what you see in September when it comes to major league baseball, because half the teams aren't playing like they really would be. And you know, it's, it's almost like not spring trains, like the first month of baseball. So, but yeah, I mean, I guess Met fans have something to look forward to. At least they hit the reset button at the right time. See the Yankees a month earlier had called up these young players. They'd be in an even better position than they are right now. So at least you got to take your hats off for Mets uh, general manager, uh, Billy Epstein to, you know, for, for at least hitting the trigger when he did. He did. He did. That you're absolutely right. Bring the young guys up. Let them play. They win in some games. They lose in some games. They, but you can see it's they they playing harder. They playing harder because these young guys they want to play. Uh, they they playing hard. They trying to do the best they can and play the best baseball they possibly can play. You're absolutely right about that. So uh, so Ryan, you you're right. You you can see what they what the Mets can do next season. Bringing in some more younger guys. Uh, obviously trading for the big name guys is not where it's at in baseball. It's not the winning formula that you see right now in baseball at the present time. Uh, before you go, I, I definitely want to get your pick for uh, for Sunday's game. What do you see about the uh, uh, Monday night's game, the Bills versus Jets? Because I know you also cover uh, the Jets is also a focal point of your show out there in Long Island, the Ryan show. Uh, what, what, what's, what do you think is going to take place Monday night? Man, I, I know that you're like the biggest Josh Allen fan. Number one Josh Allen fan, George Radney. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the Jets are playing together long enough to beat a team that's been together for that long. I know that it's Aaron Rodgers. Let's put it this way. If the Jets do win, it is a scary world for the Buffalo Bills. If they come out week one and beat the Bills for their first week ever playing together in the National Football League, 
then it's a very scary world that the Bills are living in. So I'm going to have to say that the Bills are going to win this Monday night just because they've been together for so long. Josh Allen is Josh Allen at the end of the day. Maybe he's going to adjust his offense a little bit. That's what they said going into the season. He's not going to be running the ball as much. So I'm going to have to say that the Bills are going to beat the Jets in the Meadowlands this Monday. If, if I had to put my mortgage up, that's what I'd say. I, I hear you. That's what you would say. Okay, I hear that. That's that's a good point with the uh, with the Jets. We'll see what takes place at, um, on Monday Night Football. And before we go, before we let you go, what what's your uh, pick for this week's uh, – what other uh, any other pick? And also let people yeah, know. Yeah, Big Blue, baby. Can, All day. Big, big Blue. You got the Giants <laughs> over the Cowboys? You want some bias? I'll give you some bias. Big Blue. We're taking the whole thing this year. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you, you hyped and ready for your Giants. Oh, I knew I'd oh, get yeah. you started on there. You got Brian Dable. Brian Dable will coach up your uh, Daniel Jones. Coach him up a little more. Uh, the defense is getting a little solid. You look like you might have something. You got something brewing there in the Meadowlands, uh, uh, Brian. Daniel Jones, a.k.a. Josh Allen 2.0, yeah, as I've been really? calling him now. That's what you're calling him now? <laughs> Great. Uh, tell everybody before you go, how, do, how can people uh, get in contact with you? Oh, well, that's easy. All you got to do is Google The Ryan Show. Go to Google, type in The Ryan Show. A few links come up there. Scroll past that charismatic little four-year-old. We'll open it up, all those toys, and there you'll see me and all the rest of my content, theryanshow.net. For Ryan Show stuff galore, we talk sports, music, but as you know, George, our focus on our radio program, The Ryan Show, Americana, American culture. We put a spotlight on what we deem to be the greatest parts of American culture, many of which happen to be athletes. That's right. That's right. And thank you very much for coming on the show, Ryan. We're going to have you back again real soon to talk some more uh, Giants, especially as the Giants. As we get into the season, we definitely going to have to talk some more Giants and Jets football with you as well for our listening audience. Thank Looking you so much. Looking forward to it, George. Thank you, man. All righty. Take care. That was Ryan from The Ryan Show. Hey, check him out. The Ryan Show. Hey, hey, it's a good listen to. The guy has a lot of good guests on that show, and he makes a lot of things happen over there on The Ryan Show. 